Hello beautiful people of the world and welcome to another PD tutorial. In this video and in the next few ones, we're going to talk about arrays. Now, what exactly is an array? An array is a collection of data that can be treated as one entity. So, for instance, a waveform in a table, it can be an array. Basically, you have all the numbers that represent the amplitude of the waveform and you basically treat it, you basically manipulate it as it was a single entity. So the first thing that you want to do is to go to the Put menu and choose Array. Now, what comes out is the property window, and what we're going to see here right now are just two parameters. The name of the array, which can be anything, uh, just remember, do not use special characters and spaces. So, for instance, you can name it numbers. Please remember that in PD, names are case sensitive. So, it means that numbers with an uppercase N, it's a different thing from numbers with the lowercase N. So, the name is really important because we're going to use it as the creation argument for all the objects that we will going to use to manipulate the numbers into the array. Now the size specifies the number of elements that the array is composed of. So for this video we're going to use a small number, let's say eight, just because we need to understand what's going on. So we click OK. And let me zoom in. And what appears is basically an object that it's made of two things. The actual array, so the table that contains the numbers, and its graphical representation. In fact, I can right click on it, and if you click on open, it will open a soup patch. And basically here you have the values contained in the array. So, as you can see, we can move around with the mouse, the values in the array. So if we go into performance mode or run mode, we can move around the elements. And every line is one element of the array. Okay, so every element in the array has an index. An index is start from zero, which is the first element, up to, in this case, seven, which is the eighth element. So this element is the zero element, this is the first element, number one, number two, three, four, five, six, seven. But the values that these numbers are is basically something between minus one and one. This is because there is a specific range of numbers that the elements of the array can have. And this can be set through the property windows. And yes, you heard it right. Property windows. There are two windows. So the first one we already know, and we set a couple of uh, things here. The other one is where we set some properties, like, first of all, here again, the range, this is the X range, is the range of elements. And the Y range is the range of values that every element can be. We can also set the size of the graphical representation. So for instance, we can, s we can make it bigger, like 300 and 200. When we click OK, it's bigger. So how do we write elements into an array? Because we've been using the mouse, but it's not really the ideal way. And plus, yes, we can move around the values representing into the elements, but you know, what exact number are these? So to write content into an array, we use the tab write object. So let's create a new object and tab write. And the tab write object needs a creation argument, then in this case is the name of the array. So numbers. Just remember uppercase and lowercase pure data is case sensitive so be sure to write the names in the right way. 
Okay, we have two inlets. The first one is to set the index, so to choose basically which element we are going to set the value in. And the left inlet is to actually set the actual value. So let's say that we create from zero to seven, a number atom to set the index. So again, the index parameter is used to choose which of the elements of the array we're going to write into. And we can create a second number atom. And again, we're going to change the properties so that we have our range properly set. So now if I choose, let's say the fifth, well, it, it actually it's the sixth element. And now I move here, as you can see, I am actually writing these values into the sixth element of the array. If I set zero, I am now writing to into the first element of the array. Okay, now how do we read values from the elements of an array? Well, we have the corresponding object, tab read. And again, creation argument is the name of the array, so numbers. And this, this is pretty simple, actually. We can attach a number atom to the tab read outlet, which gives us the value of the element that we choose, and we choose the element by another number atom or another object. And again, we can change the properties from zero to seven. And this is, again, the index. And this is the actual value of the selected element. Element by its index. So if I choose the sixth element, I have the actual value. And if I choose the second element, again, I have the value and I can go over the values. So one thing that we can do, the last thing that we can do in this video to have a little bit of fun, is to actually create a mechanism that reads the values of the array cyclically. So we need a toggle, and then we need a metro. And we already know what this does. And we need a counter from zero to seven. And if we activate it, well, as you can see, it spits out cyclically the content of the array. And again, we can change the values here. Oh, sorry. And now the fourth, uh, the fourth, the fifth element, element number four, is zero to six. So remember that the elements are numbered from zero. So we have zero is the first element, and then the second element is one, the third element is two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So these are the indexes of the elements of the array. So you have eight elements, but basically we start to count from zero. So from zero to seven, it's actually eight numbers. So eight elements. Okay, so that's it. This is the basic introduction for the arrays. And the arrays are really, really cool objects because we can do many, many things with them. We can upload files into it. We can use them as oscillator for our uh, uh, waveforms. 
We can use them as LFOs, we can use them as step sequencers. We can do a lot, a lot of things with them. So in the next video, we're going to explore more about arrays. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, share the video, and if you have questions, you can write them in the comment section and I will be happy to answer to you as soon as possible. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.